Welcome to The Daily Forecast, October 4th, 2021. I'm Angie Lau, Editor-in-Chief of Forecast News, covering all things blockchain. The launch of an ECNY wallet based within a chat application could see things really taking off in China. We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more coming up. Let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. First up, two Chinese giants have teamed up to offer a digital yuan wallet accessible via a chat window on your mobile phone. China's largest communications company, China Mobile, has partnered with the country's biggest bank, ICBC, to launch the wallet. Forecast News' Carolyn Wright reports on what this could mean for the rollout of the country's digital currency. China has already wholeheartedly embraced mobile payments. According to data from Statista, Alipay has almost 700 million users, and Business of Apps suggests 900 million WeChat Pay users. That's a significant number out of a population of 1.4 billion. And with WeChat Pay already allowing users to transfer money directly via its chat box, many in the country are already used to making such payments. The new message over 5G service will also allow users to transfer money directly in a chat box. That's in addition to messaging friends with text and audio, video, location and contact cards, just like WeChat. The service has already been under trial, but was only available on certain phones that had been tailored to support it. This is its first large-scale official promotion, with Chinese state-owned media saying a full rollout will likely take place this month. If the service proves as popular as WeChat Pay and Alipay, it could be huge for China's ECMY rollout plans. For Forecast News, I'm Carolyn Wright. Meanwhile, in Korea, crypto bad actors are acting up. A new government report reveals that illegal foreign transactions made using virtual assets surged nearly 40x compared to last year alone. More than 600 million US dollars were traded unlawfully or illegally across the borders via crypto. And what's more surprising here, perhaps, only nine cases were actually responsible for all of that. Forecast News, Danny Park has all the details. According to a report from Korean lawmaker Song Jae-ho using data from the Korea Customs Service, the amount of illegal foreign transactions using virtual assets has already broken a record this year, hitting 812 billion Korean won, or around 684 million US dollars. And that's only from January to August. The previous high was 784 billion won for the whole of 2018, while the amount fell to just 20 billion won last year. Lawmaker Song Jae-ho attributes the surge to the rise of speculative forces in and out of Korea, as prices of virtual assets soared domestically and as the virtual asset market grew larger. So-called hanchiki, or illegal foreign transactions, trade different currencies with the Korean won without proper reporting to the banks, to avoid remittance fees and hide flows of money that would likely be unauthorized. The bigger problem here is that these could also possibly fund tax evasion, illegal gambling, or even drug smuggling. One expert told Forecast News it's impossible to detect all illegal transactions using crypto. Professor O says more research needs to be done to eradicate this financial crime as it has dangerous potential. For Forecast News, I'm Danny Park. And finally today, we're going to end on Compound here. It's technical woes for this decentralized finance protocol. Well, it continues. A hack has resulted in just over 200,000 of its native comp tokens worth around 68 million US dollars at the time being transferred from its reservoir to its comptroller, where they remain vulnerable to being drained by future transactions. Now, Compound's woes began last week with an update called Proposal 062. A bug meant its comptroller contract, the part of the protocol responsible for allocating yield farming rewards, accidentally distributed 280,000 tokens to the wrong people, forcing founder Robert Leshner to ask users to please return them. Just another day in crypto. And that's the daily forecast from our vantage point right here in Asia. For more, visit forecast.news. I'm editor-in-chief Angie Lau. Until the next time.